uh, we're able to have discussions also. We just heard to yep. and, uh, be able to. So I'll uh, pass the floor off to Curtis. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are Group 16, and we are excited to be presenting to you today. Uh, my name is Curtis, and uh, with me today is Luigi, uh, Jawe, and Ethan. Hello. Uh, without further ado, Ethan will explain the background of our rather unique project. Thanks, Curtis. Let's start off with identifying the problem. Do any of you guys live with roommates? Well, I do, and a topic that has been argued many times is, who's using all the toilet paper? The people that are barely using it get super annoyed because they have to pay the same amount because the price is split equally. If you didn't know, toilet paper is really expensive, mostly because we don't want to rip our asses only using one ply. So I don't want to be paying for other roommates to have the luxury of cleaning their butts with 20 sheets of wipe. That adds up. If every time you defecate, you do two or three wipes, that's almost 50 bucks a month or 15 bucks a month. That's more than three Jagger bombs worth of toilet paper. As you can clearly see, this is a major problem and we are determined to solve it. Current toilet paper dispensers only feature automatic dispensing. I'm honored to present to you today, one if not the greatest innovations in toilet tech since the Squatty Potty, introducing the TPT or toilet paper tracker. With a simple wave of your hand, it automatically dispenses a preset amount of toilet paper while simultaneously tracking the amount of each user is using. Now I'll hand it over to Zhao Wei. Okay, so now let's talk about our objectives. So the argument about how much toilet paper used by each person often occurs between roommates, and some people claim that toilet paper was used by another person to sabotage them. Therefore, our toilet paper dispenser has several things to achieve. First, reduce the cost of toilet paper consumption for the group of roommates. Then, track and, and identify who is using the most toilet paper. The machine must be safe, easy to set up, easy to use, and easy to sanitize. Finally, we take the cost into account with the goal of being between 24.99 and 34.99 Canadian dollars. And now for some essential and non-essential needs. This system is motion activated by when your hand near the sensor. A key part of our toilet paper dispenser is to track usage and constantly dispense, uh, uh, dispense the amount of toilet paper. One non-essential idea is to make an audio noise to notify when a toilet paper roll is almost de depleted. Because we are not concerned about power consumption, Another non-essential feature is to implement a sleep mode to conserve usage if it was battery powered. And for the methodology, we are limited to use the keypad, Arduino Nano microprocessor, four cubic inches of 3D printer plastic, and the other components included in the kit. Also, any extra materials must be biodegradable. Now, Ethan will talk about some design details. So our system architecture includes some functions we must be able to test. These functions include who is currently using the dispenser, how much toilet paper is each user using, of which a breakdown would be displayed via email on a monthly basis. Does it automatically dispense a defined amount of sheets triggered by the wave of the hand, designed to limit the amount of toilet paper usage? Does it accurately dispense a repeatable amount of sheets regardless of the different diameter of rolls? Is the roll easily replaceable when it runs out, preferably in under five seconds? So here are some renders of our current design. It's very rudimentary and many things will be added and changed as we finalize and test each function and identify problems with it. The red represents the frame, which is mounted to the wall and holds the roll of toilet paper, and the green part, which allows the purple roller to push and grip onto the roll with constant pressure. Then tension will be held by an elastic or if permitted a spring. The, peep, the purple roller is rotated indirectly by the servo through a four to one gearing ratio to increase the speed of dispensing. Typically a servo only has 180 degrees of rotation, but we are modifying ours to rotate continuously. Now I'll pass it on to Curtis to talk about some design alternatives. 
Yes, so our main concern with our design is the implementing, uh, counteracting the changes in radius as we use the roll. Um, so if our current external wheel, well, servo wheel design is unable to do this, we will write a servo code with an infinite while loop and if else structure, and the code will update the rotation speed or duration as the roll is used and the radius changes. And this will account, try to account for the uh, difference in uh, amount of sheets dispensed. Now, for our decision process, we had to use a numerical evaluation matrix where a score of five was the best and a score of one was unsatisfactory. Um, and in this numerical evaluation matrix, uh, both options uh, dispense uh, toilet paper and kept track of individual's usage. Um, the benefits of our chosen external wheel design was that it's more adaptive to different types of roles. It's easier to implement the code and most likely faster and more uniform to dispense. Uh, some drawbacks of this design is it will require more plastic material and therefore cost more and possibly ha have unequal number of sheets dispensed. Whereas the alternative, Sorry, what the are these numbers? Code, Excuse me. What are these numbers here? I do not understand. Three, four, twenty. Yes. Yeah, so it's a one to five uh, scoring ratio. So five being best, one being worst. Okay. Um, so, and, and the scores represent what I'm talking about here with our overall benefits and drawbacks. Um, so the alternative cove, um, it will be, uh, it'll be more precise in number of sheets dispensed, but it will be harder to implement um, because of the uh, code and it will likely have an uneven dispense time as well. And now I'll pass on to Luigi. So in terms of management, in terms of management, this was a tricky subject because we are in a different learning environment and it is difficult for the team to meet face to face to work on a project together. So as a compromise, all of the team members will be equally responsible for making the product using their own kits and all of the responsibilities will fall equally upon all the team members of group 16. So our team will be equally responsible for producing conceptual designs and sharing ideas with one another. All of the coding will be divided for the Arduino and we will be helping each other out in case we get stuck. And with regards to reports and presentations, we will also be splitting up the work equally. So here we have some critical dates that we are hoping to achieve in the next few weeks. By March 12th, our team will have fully built and implemented all functions of the design to ensure that we are on track to fulfill the project deadline. By March 13th, our team will have tested all functionalities so that we are confident in every aspect of device function. If any errors occur, we can fix and troubleshoot them. By March 19th, our team will meet to discuss, work on, and finalize the final presentation of our design. And by March 21st, our design project will be fully completed. So here in the next slide, we have our calendar. So this is our February schedule, but I'm going to be going over this as uh, the March is schedule is more important. So here is our March calendar. On the 5th and 12th, we were going to fully complete the objectives, take the 13th to test it, the 19th to work on the final presentation, and the 21st to have the project fully ready. So in conclusion, we will be testing the preliminary design, use 3D CAD models to have a visualization of our project, use and implement the design alternative design method if the current one fails. And finally, we will build the project and fulfill all of the design objectives. This marks the end of our presentation. Any questions? Uh, thank you, team number 16. Just a couple uh, maintenance issues. Uh, so, uh, well, <laughs> this is a perfect example of what happens when we things remotely. It's it's mm -hmm. sometimes we uh, it's it's hard to maintain accountability. So first of all, uh, just Curtis, just be careful about language. Sometimes we are supposed to maintain professional. And to me, it distracted me from the rest of the presentation afterwards. So just got to be careful about language. The other thing is uh, on our judging panel, I, I know Abba Fazl is not super um, familiar with the process in the past. He hasn't been gaining this course, but 
it, yeah, it is. Uh, it is much I, more. No, no, I, I didn't it, understand. It, it, so I didn't understand what the table is about. I interrupted yep, the students. Yep, yeah, I know okay. that some students are actually getting angry, but I needed yep. to be a good judge. I needed to ask them and understand what's the process. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna just stop. Yeah, and then I'm gonna ask. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, I would like so, to point I mean, out that we no, had the slide uh, explaining it as well. No, no, I understand. Yeah. It was a so, great presentation. I liked it. It was a good topic. Okay. And Abba Fazl, this might be a misunderstanding between me and you because these are so, uh, uh, sort of standard slides that I ask all the students to give, but it is good that the students actually okay. review well, the, the because material. Because that I, I didn't provided. understand what are the numbers are, I interrupted. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a problem for my side. Yeah. It's. Um, it, the, these are the type of things that happen in a remote environment, so I'm not blaming anybody, okay? But just let's be patient with each other. Okay, so uh, a team, uh, do I have else who have any comments uh, with respect to, uh, to, uh, to, to the actual technical development? I thought, uh, personally, I thought technically there, there seem to be things that need to be thought a little bit more thoroughly but it is a project that actually would have some usefulness and and uh, um, and would uh, and uh, there it seems feasible as well i i did think that your mechanisms would be uh, a little challenging to build but but uh, you uh, if with a little bit of ambition and a little bit of hard work you can get there yeah i I just okay. want to say that I think this is an incredibly unique uh, project. I think this is very. I was I was did not expect to see something like this today. So. But but it, like Jay, like Dr. Bousquet said, it's great. It's a good idea. One thing that I would think about if I were you guys is, uh, including maybe in your problem statement or thinking about a little bit the applications of this kind of device at a larger scale. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. So where are we on time thank here? You. So we're supposed to have group 15. We're supposed to have group 15 present at what uh, at what time? 